All right, so if anyone has any questions in the presentation, just uh, speak up. I usually find that makes my presentations better in case I wander off the, uh, the path. Uh, so really quick, obligatory about me slide. Uh, I specialize in VR and online multiplayer. I'm currently working at W4 Games, which is a company uh, created by some of the project leadership on the Godot project, working on the uh, multiplayer cloud product. I'm a Godot maintainer. I'm on the XR and GD extension teams. And I also maintain a whole bunch of open source Godot add-ons and extensions and stuff. Uh, and I make my own silly little games and tutorials and things over at snowpetgames.com. And I stream uh, doing game dev, although lately it's just been Godot dev, like streaming, working on Godot itself, on uh, YouTube Weekly on Fridays. So uh, we're going to talk about GD extension, but before we do, let's talk about how Godot works. So internally, Godot is made up of a bunch of different buckets of code. Um, there's the core, which is kind of like the lowest level stuff. It's class DB, variants, some IO things, math, uh, drivers, so like Vulkan, OpenGL, also all that stuff. The platform code, so the code that allows it to run on Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, uh, web. Uh, some servers, which aren't really like servers in the sense of, of like networking. They're like, um, uh, like just uh, components that handle one thing, usually uh, with some threading, uh, like the physics server, rendering server, all the text handling that's done by a server, the scene system, all the nodes and stuff that we use all the time, and modules. A lot of interesting stuff comes from modules. Uh, there are 51 modules in the Godot master branch presently. Some include GDScript. All of GDScript is a Godot module. The C Sharp support, uh, multiplayer, everything related to multiplayer is its own module. Uh, navigation, uh, near and dear to my heart, OpenXR and WebXR, each individually modules. Um, various importers, quite a few of the modules are just for importing stuff. So there's, there's like a GLTF module, an AUG module, SVG module. So what can a module do? Uh, they can be enabled and disabled. So you can recompile Godot and like disable all the modules you don't use and get a, a really small build uh, if that's something you want to do. Uh, they can provide new node types or just other classes in general. Uh, they can provide their own servers or singletons. Editor plugins, a module can add a whole new section to the editor or modify the way uh, different parts of the editor work. Um, how would one go about making a module? Uh, so basically, you just add a new directory in the modules directory in the Godot source and put in some standard files. Uh, register types.cpp, we'll see that one again because it also applies to GD extensions. Uh, SC sub, which is like a scans build system thing, and this config.py, which basically just like detects should this module be enabled or not. Then you write your C code to do whatever it is the thing you want to do, and you recompile Godot. So, what does all this have to do with GD extensions? So the goal of GD extension is to allow developers to add module-like functionality to Godot but without needing to recompile Godot. So like dynamically loadable modules, uh, which is kind of similar to the Linux kernel. I don't know how many other people are big into Linux, but you have the modules that you can compile into Linux or uh, load dynamically. Uh, and via Godot CPP, which is the uh, C++ binding for a GD extension, you can write C++ code that can be compiled either as a module or a GD extension. One of the goals of Godot CPP is to try and have an API that's as similar as possible uh, to the API that Godot uses internally, so that with like a bunch of if defs, you could uh, you know use the same code either inside or outside of the engine. <clears throat> but GD extensions don't need to be C++. Um, GD extension itself is a C API, which can be implemented by bindings for any programming language that can do stuff with C. So there are some uh, existing language bindings, uh, the C++ one, which I mentioned earlier, it's the only official language binding, but maintained by the community. There's also a Rust binding. There's like two or three different Python bindings. Uh, there's a Lua and Luau uh, GD extension binding, JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, Kotlin, uh, Java, it's kind of the same thing, like a JVM binding, and probably more. Uh, there were a whole bunch more for Godot 3, or actually they wouldn't have been GD extension, it would have just been like scripting languages added via, via GD native, but uh, things are still kind of ramping up for Godot 4, but there's still a lot of, a lot of things going on. So yeah, let's, let's make a GD extension really quick. Uh, I'm going to kind of do a, 
abbreviated version of the uh, official docs here, the, the C++ example. Um, yeah, so I'm starting from just a empty directory in VS Code. We're going to get the uh, Godot CPP bindings. I actually don't want to do a submodule. Hang on. I copy and pasted the wrong thing. Any any questions on GD extension in general before I dive right into this? I should have paused earlier. All right. All right, so that uh, checked out Godot CPP from Git. Next, uh, they're going to have us making some directories. So yeah, Godot CPP is where the bindings are. We're going to make a demo directory, which is where the Godot project is going to be, and a source directory where our C++ code is going to be. And actually, let me just use Godot to create the Godot project. Yes, it exists. Oh, one more path there. No? Uh. There we go. Although I think I accidentally created it with a capital D. I just fix that, yep. All right. So the first thing we're going to make is uh, a header file that uh, describes this uh, Sprite2D uh, descended class that we're going to make. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever uh, done anything in the Godot source code or looked at the Godot source code, but this basically is exactly the same way that you would like create a new node type in the Godot engine. Hmm with this uh, GD class, magical macro, uh, the static void bind methods. We'll be seeing all that stuff again in a moment. And the CPP file. Oops. Or actually, I guess the demo won't take us into anything interesting. <laughs> but uh, uh, normally, if you had any uh, like methods that you wanted to register with Godot so that GDScript could call them, or if you wanted to add any properties so that they would appear in the editor, that's all stuff that you would put here in, in bind methods. Otherwise, uh, our class is very, very simple. Just has a double time passed. We're implementing uh, underscore process method, same as you would in GDScript. Uh, in our constructor, we're setting time pass to zero. And then in our uh, process, we're just incrementing that with uh, how much time has, has passed, the delta value, and uh, calculating a new position for our Sprite2D descended node here, because we're descending from Sprite2D. Um, doing some stuff with uh, sine and, and cosine, so it'll sort of wiggle around the screen, and then setting the, the new position. And then this is going to be our uh, register types CPP, which has uh, some GD extension specific stuff in it. We have to tell Godot about all of our uh, classes that we're including in our GD extension. And uh, these two methods are very similar to what you would have in a Godot module. Um, 
every module gets like an initialize and uninitialize uh, function. The way initialization works in Godot is there's like several levels. It does like module initialization core, then module initialization servers, and then uh, module initialization scene, which is the only one we care about here, where we're going to register our new node type. And in this example, we don't need to do anything when we uninitialize. This next bit is specific to GD extension. Uh, GD extension has each GD extension has to provide like an entry point, a function for Godot to call to kind of kick everything off. Uh, so then this is ours for our example. And then all we do in here is initialize the uh, Godot CPP bindings. Anything else, uh, Godot CPP just kind of handles for us uh, behind the scenes. And this file isn't totally necessary, but for completeness, we also have a register types uh, h file. Now we need to uh, set up a, a build system to build it. We're going to grab this hard-coded construct file for uh, the scans uh, build tool, but there's really no requirement to use it. Uh, if you wanted to use make or Mason or CMake or like whatever build tool that you personally like, you can use that as well. Um, but using the um, this construct is kind of nice uh, because uh, Godot CPP itself also uses scans. Uh, so it can kind of leverage uh, the stuff that's in Godot CPP. And I think we can build it. Let's go see if the tutorial tells us to do anything else. No, we can build it. So we're just going to type scans to build, and it's going to take a minute. Um, the way that uh, GD extension works is it's got not a very human-friendly C API. Uh, it's basically designed to work with some kind of code generator. So um, there's a whole bunch of generated uh, code for like every class in Godot that you would interact with. Uh, like, I don't know, let's just go look at like node HPP. So there's a, a file that Godot can generate. Uh, it's the extension underscore API dot JSON file. And it has all the information about like all the classes that Godot knows about. And then Godot CPP can take that and uh, generate all of this so that we can interact with uh, our node class from, from C++. All right, so it looks like that finished building. We have one more step before Godot can load this. We have to make a dot GD extension file, uh, which tells Godot uh, the uh, name of the uh, entry point function, uh, what Godot versions it's compatible with, and then this is which binary to load on which platform. So I'm on Linux, the only one that's really going to matter here is this Linux debug x86-64, and then the path to the .so uh, to load in this case. Because we're running in the editor to load the debug one, uh, for when you're exporting the game for release, it would take the, the release version, which would probably be a little bit smaller, a little bit more performant because there's less debug checks. Uh, on Windows, you know, you have a, a DLL file. On Mac, is Mac in here? No, it's not, but there would be a dialib file. So anyway, let's grab this code. Find our source directory again. Or not this construct. Hang on. We don't want to go in the source directory. We need to put this in our Godot project, actually. Um, so this would be a gd example.gd extension. Paste all this code. And let me just make sure that everything is where it should be. Yep. So here's the uh, the actual .so file that, that got built by, built by scans. So there's an error loading. Interesting. Let's try restarting the editor. Live demos. What did we do wrong? Cannot resolve symbol example library init. Right. Hmm. So I'm getting the impression that for some reason it didn't pick up our register types file. I'm just going to mess with this for a second. I probably need to do verbose, or I'll show it anyway. Ah. Hmm. 
I'm gonna have it recompile again with verbose so I can just see what um, see what it's doing. Well, while we wait for that, does anyone have any questions? All right, well, we'll just watch things compile together. Oh, that's not very helpful, is it? So I've finished compiling. I just wanted to make sure that it had compiled the register types CPP, but it, I was kind of expecting it to do it last. Here, we'll... Oh, you know what? Uh, all these files didn't go into the source directory. There we go. Yeah, so this construct file that we downloaded basically will compile every uh, .cpp file that it finds in, in source. So I just made a dumb VS Code mistake there. Sorry, guys. There we go, it compiled our GD example and our register type CPP, so it should work this time. We'll restart the editor. And let's make a scene to put our node in. There we go, we went to create new node and our GD example is there. And because this is a Godot demo, we have to put the Godot logo. And you can see even in the editor, it's already animating around. So yeah, that's it guys.